Hello, everybody. Father, we thank you for your word. Oh, your word is good. Good for us, good to us, good on us, good in us, and good back out of us as we speak it. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to talk about how does God work? How does God work? Most people think God can just do anything. Isn't that right? I mean, he's God. He can just do anything. Well, God is governed by laws. They're not... He's governed by the law of faith. It's according to your faith. That's how he's governed. That's how he does things. See? And uh, so we're the ones. We're going to look over here. Look, if you got a Bible, open it up to John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And it talks about who is the main factor here concerning how God works in our lives see we always just well god's working in our life well are you are you in the word see he's going to work according to his word see, this is introduction as i'm going through here we're going to go right here okay so in Chapter 16, in verse 23, but how God works. Like when you pray or you say, you know, say, well, well God, I want a change in my life. Or God, I want, uh, you know, whatever it is. I want to love you. I want to worship you. Whatever it is, this is how he, this is how he does it. We're going to just kick through here and see. Okay, so look at uh, this verse, John, St. John, chapter 16, and verse 23. Is in that day, talking about nowadays, right now, ye shall ask me nothing. Okay, now it don't mean, don't ask nothing, because keep reading. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father, see there, in my name, I will give it to you. He will give it to you. So you're connecting to God through Jesus. Isn't that good? He's connecting to God. So keep on reading. Keep on reading 24. Have you asked nothing in my name? At the time, they hadn't asked anything yet because Jesus hadn't went to heaven yet and sat down at the right hand of the Father. Because when he did that, well, then he gave us the authority, the authority of the believer. And you shall ask, you shall receive that that your joy will be full now look at this most people read that like they're wait they're waiting to receive when god gives it to me well then i'll receive it but the word receive means take so anytime there's a you pray for change or ask for change or want to change the first thing god does is he shows you, see, he's going to go according to his word, and we're supposed to go according to his word too. Not according to what Aunt Betsy believed, or Uncle Don, or Mary Catherine, or whatever. Some of my family's names are all dead, so they can't, they can't get me. And so, But not according to what they believed, whether it was good or bad. It's according to what the word of God says. Not according to some poem or something that somebody said or done on Facebook or, you know, Instagram or a plaque you've seen, you know, or something like that. Some of those things are scriptural and some of them are not scriptural. Some of them are just religious cliches. Okay, so have you asked nothing in my name? Well, now we're going to God through Jesus' name and you, you will have joy. See, you receive with joy. You ask, receive with joy. See that? And not just joy, not just not just a little bit of joy. You may be filled with joy, full to overflowing with joy. See? So the things of God is definitely not boring. 
if they're boring, then you're, you're telling on yourself that you're not hanging out with God. Because how can you be bored if you're hanging out with the creator of the heavens and the earth, the universe, and, every, and light and dark and everything else? I mean, you can't be. Okay? So let's, uh, let's go a little bit deeper here. Turn the page. Look in chapter 15 of John, St. John chapter 15, verse 7. Now again, we're talking about how does God work? See, see, most people, they think, well, God can just working the way he wants to. Well, he tells you how he's going to do this. So it's, it's really uh, not good to just throw it up in the air where God do it however he wants to. God do, uh, God's going, no, look, look, at look, look what he wrote the Bible for a reason. The reason he, well, let's just put that. Yeah. Write that in here. That sounds good. No, he put it in there. So we would know. He don't want us to be ignorant of the word of God. I mean, first Corinthians chapter 12 says, brother, I don't want you to be ignorant. See there. He don't, he don't want you to be ignorant. He wants you to tune into what the word of God says and then do what it says. St. John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, chapter 15 and verse 7. If you abide in me, abide in what? In him. In religious cliches, no. In rubbing ropes, no. Candles, no. No. Beanie head, no. Uh, shop, no. Tend this, tend that, no. Abide in him. See? In my words... There's another one. My words abide in you. Now look at this. Look at this. If ye, that's you, that's one you, abide in me and my words abide in you, that's two yous, ye shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. The main ingredients is how God works is you. It's, it's more on you than it is on God. You see that? Five times he says you. Five times in that one verse. So we're the one that has to abide in the word. We got to abide in him first. How do you do that? Romans 10, 9, ask him to come in. And then you have to abide in. The word has to abide in you. Well, how do you get the word to abide in you? You hang around the word of God through faith. See, because you can't even understand the word of God without having your eyes opened up to the word of faith. I mean, you just can't. Uh, you're very limited. So what do you do? You abide. You abide in me. That's what he said. Jesus. Red letters. And my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will. So your will is involved. When your will lines up with God's will. Well, what is God's will? Well, God's will is everybody gets saved. God's will is everybody gets filled with the Holy Spirit. God's will is that you pray in the Holy Spirit and read the word of God. That's your devotional time right there. That's the plan of God. The plan of God. You never had to pray, what's the plan? That's the plan of God right there. Says, well, I want to know what my ministry is. Our very first ministry is to God. When we're hanging out with God, we're hanging out with scriptures, we're, we're, that's our, we're ministering unto the Lord. See? We're ministering unto the Lord when we know what the Word says and we speak the Word. That's ministering unto the Lord. So when God... When you're ready and you want God to change you, the first thing he does is he's going to deal with you about changing what you say. He's also going to deal with you about changing, you know, about scriptures, about reading scriptures. He wants you to say the scriptures. Uh, Matthew, the fourth chapter, Jesus said, you know, it is written, it is written, it is written. That's how he defeated the enemy. Well, if Jesus has to defeat the enemy by saying the scriptures, guess what? You do too. You do too. That's never going to change from Genesis to Revelation. That's not going to change, see. 
And uh, so let's read that one more time. If you abide in me and my words, not just abiding in anything else. It's, see, what most people miss it is they pray and that's good. Well, I had my prayer time with God. Well, that's great. Then it says what? And my words abide in you. The only way you're going to get the words to abide in is if you, if you put them in there. See? So you abide with him, hanging out with him in prayer. And my words abide in you. Ye shall ask. There's asking. See, now, you, now you're asking according to the word of God. But you don't just keep asking. Because in it, because in it, because look at the rest of it. And the, remember the verse before that? She'll be done to you. That means receive. Just turn the page. Let's go back one. I can look in verse 24. This is whatever you ask. See, this, this, is, a, this is the clincher. It's finishing up here. In my name, ask, receive. And then what's it say? Laugh about it. <laughs> it's a joy. May be full. Amen. So what do you know? You have a note of victory. See, why, why would you have a note of victory? Because you already know that God has provided his word. We put his word in us. We say his word. We're not guaranteed. We're not guaranteed. Let me say this. Let me look at this. We're not guaranteed that we used to have it. No, that's you can't live in the past. You can, but you you're right now being messed up. And if you can't live in the future, well, I hope he does it. No, these are absolute truths. See, God's word's absolute. There's no gray areas. Well, I think it says this, and it might be this, and I don't think he meant that. No, that's not what it is. The blessing is not for today. We're living under the curse. All this kind of crazy, goofy stuff. It's because they don't. The Holy Spirit isn't really teaching them. That's why they have all that goofy stuff in their head, trying to figure it out. No, just take the Word of God at face value. So look at it. receive with joy. See, receive with joy. What the word receive here is the same word as take. Now, we know how, like this Bible case, we know how to reach out here and pick it up with our hand. We know how to take it. Well, what is it? Or this little computer case. What, what is it that you, when, you, when you speak to it, whatever it is, doesn't matter what it is, healing or whatever, whatever it is that you're speaking to, you simply say, I have whatever it is. I don't know what changes a lot of things, but well, why would you say I have? Because that means you receive it. The word receive by all through the Bible, ask, believe, receive. Do we just believe? No. Do we just keep asking all the time? No. We ask, believe and receive the word receive is take. You take it with your faith. You take it with your words. See, you take when God's word becomes our words, we got it. It don't matter what it is. Somebody said, "Well, I had, I, I did all that, but I got, I wound up with stage four cancer." It don't matter what stage you're at. It, it, that don't mean anything. You start speaking God's word that you have. I am the healed. See, you might have to get rid of some of your goofy friends that's coming against faith. There's some people that don't know about faith. They're not really coming against it. You can help them. But if there's people that are actually coming against it, they're trying to get you and other people to identify how you used to be. See, we're, we're no longer sinners saved by grace. No, 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 no. No, I know people say that. They sing songs and everything else, but that is an error. That's not in line with God's word. See, we are who we are now. We are who we are now. Who are we now? We're not who we used to be. That's like trying to drive a car going forward, look in the rear view mirror. If you do that, you're going you're gonna to wind up having a crash and a burn. See, you, know, you got to, 
you got you don't drive the car with the rear view mirror trying to go forward see so you simply do what the scripture whatever you've released your faith on you can just rejoice with with one version says exceedingly joy overflowing joy till it be filled to overflowing joy you can just laugh about it when the enemy says you don't have that you can laugh about it amen maybe you put on an event or something and nobody showed up just laugh about it <laughs> just laugh about it maybe you had a special this or a special that and nobody showed up just laugh about it well why because god his faith cannot lie and he's giving you his faith it's not flawed faith well i guess i don't have enough faith huh how you know if you got a faith, enough faith you laugh about it amen you can laugh yourself healed you can laugh yourself right out of the hospital you can laugh yourself free of whatever it is bugging you talk to a guy on thanksgiving it's been seven years now and he's been they've been telling him that when i first started working on him i used these scriptures and i said he was sitting he was all depressed all upset and uh I said, it's a good thing you're healed. He said, I wish I was. I said, the word of God don't work by wishing. He said, what? I said, it's a good thing you're healed. Well, I wish I was. I hope I was. I said, the word of God don't work by hoping or wishing you was. The word of God works by saying, biting it. How do you abide in the word? What are you saying? You really want to, you really want what you're saying? Then you got to quit that. If, if you don't want it. No, 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 no. Well, the doctor said I have. Well, God said, I have this. God, Jesus says, I have this. So you can't be double-minded. You have to just say what the word of God says. Now, the enemy be right there. He'd be trying to get you get mad at everybody. <laughs> you know, he'd be trying to get you get mad at yourself. He'd he try to get you tripped up in that. But see, that's all flesh thinking. That you're, you're three-part being. The real you is not the flesh part of you, not your body. That's just an earth suit. The real you is not your mind, will, and emotions. Because you're going through something, your mind, will, and emotions kind of might feel like it's getting the best of you. See, the real you is your spirit. See, these are spirit words. And what happens is you when you take them into you, the spirit words, they go to work. They start moving this. Uh, I almost said crap, but I probably shouldn't. Uh, but... <laughs> It's, gonna, it's moving all the mess out of your mind, of your body, whatever it is the enemy's trying to distract you. It starts moving it out. You say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do sickness. I've had people say, oh, I just feel this or feel that. You know, that's that's not you, though. That's that's your body. That's, that's your earth suit. The real you would say what the scripture says. No, no, I'm not going to do sickness. I'm not a container for sickness. I'm a container for healing. <laughs> See, I, I'm not a container for brokenness. I'm a container for wealth. I'm healthy, wealthy, and wise. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not a container for the, the evil of the world. John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. No, I'm, I'm not a container for stealing, killing, and destroying. No. What are you? Well, I am Acts. I'm glad you asked. I'm Acts 10, 38. I am just like Jesus. He lives in me. I'm connecting with Jesus. And Jesus said, God said, uh, God said that Jesus, of, he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit that goes around doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil. So I resist oppression. No, 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 no. So we got we got to realize we are not the depressed trying to get undepressed. No, we're already the free pushing against depression. See, identify with who you are in Christ Jesus. There's no word about it says that God gave you depression. No, no. Even sickness. Well, I guess I'm weak in faith because uh because uh I got sickness. No, no, no. You are the healed resisting sickness. See that? Don't put that junk on me. I'm not taking it. 
That's what you got to be like. See, what did Jesus do? Each time, Matthew, the fourth chapter, the devil kept trying to get Jesus to say or do something that God didn't tell him to do. Well, so Jesus would just say what the scripture says. Oh, the devil going to quote some scriptures too. <laughs> Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You're supposed to go through that. That word affliction doesn't mean sickness and disease. See, uh, Galatians 3.13 says we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. That's us. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. Well, what's the curse? Sin, sickness, and disease, poverty, things like that. Now, you might look in your life and you see poverty, you see lack, you see that nothing's working, you see everything's broken, everything's missing, it's just not working right. I feel this, I feel that. Well, guess what? That's not the real you. The real you is that you're redeemed from the curse of the law. That's what you got to start saying. Then the Holy Ghost goes to work and starts getting that junk out, see, getting it from around you. Nothing broken, nothing missing. And then you know what happens? Things start getting fixed. Things start working. Things start working. The healing See, so starts moving around in our body. We're connecting with the healer that lives on the inside of us. We're not connecting with the curse. The way you talk the curse is you talk is the way you connect with the curse is you talk the curse. Broke, busted, and disgusted, sick, all that kind of stuff. No, well, you got to start doing Isaiah fifty three five. I remember one time as a as a visitor at a pretty large church here in town. And a friend of mine was a pastor. I'd just go there when we had an off night or or a, a got in from traveling or, or something like that. They had a special service. I'd go there and just shout the victory with them and enjoy, enjoy it. There was a lady. She got up every service I was there. And she said, okay, everybody in here that's sick, raise your hand. I had people all over that building that was sick. And the Lord just kind of scratched me on the inside. He said, they're going to stay sick too. She, she thought she was doing right because she, she'd say, okay, everybody that's sick, raise your hand and the people around them lay hands on, pray for them. And so I didn't say anything to her. That went on for a while. And then one day we was at Sirloin Stockade Steakhouse. Well, her and her husband came. And I said, uh, I can show you how to get more people healed. She said, okay, show me. Because she said, all these people we're praying for, they come back next week and they're all sick. I said, yeah, I noticed that. I said, this is how you get more people healed. I said, you just raise your hand up and you say, who here wants to agree with me that you're Isaiah 53, 5, that you're healed? It said, man, them hands flew up everywhere. And then she said, now, people pray for him. We said, amen. Now, after the prayer is over or even during the prayer, you don't have to wait on God to heal you. You can connect with what you're saying with the word of God and just say Isaiah 53, 5, by stripes, that you're healed. So they all come in agreement that they're healed. They quit agreeing they're sick, they need prayer, and started agreeing that they are the healed according to Isaiah 53, 5. Isn't that wonderful? And people start getting healed. She said, man, it works like magic. I said, no, it's not magic. It's what the word of God says to do. See, you can have what you say. Who here? Is Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes, I'm healed. She just got him to agree. She started doing that. I hadn't been there in a long time. He's, he's, he went somewhere. I don't know where he went, but uh, he's traveling out. Uh, but I hadn't went there in a long time. But if they keep doing that, they'll keep him getting people healed. Just like on here. See? You're healed. See? You don't have to pray to God to change you or heal you or something like that. You can just simply say, thank you. Did you know that praise and worship is real simple? It's, this is how simple it is to praise God. Thank you. 
that I am healed. Thank you. I am a receiver of that I have received. Before you can see it or feel it in your body, it activates God and he starts moving in there. He starts doing it. See, that's how he does it. That's how God works in you is when we get our mouth. Just read that one scripture again in the light of it. Verse 7 of St. John chapter 15. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. See, it's up to us. Well, if it's God's will, he'll give it to us. Well, we're abiding in his word. So his word is God talking to you. He's telling you what his will is in the scriptures. Well, he might change his mind. No, God's not schizophrenic. <laughs> no, we don't, we, we're the ones that the enemy tries. Because you don't want to change your mind concerning what you release your faith on. Because if you change your mind and start saying something different, you don't want the different. No, you want the what you said you have. Don't change it. No matter what your five senses are saying. And you shall ask, well, you ask with your mouth, what are you doing? According to this scripture, ye will, is your wills involved? Five times there the word you is mentioned. The main factor is you. God's already decided you're healed, saved, set free, and delivered. We have to decide with enough word and get in us. That we have to decide, yeah, we're the healed, saved, set free, and delivered. I'm, what am I, I'm not fooling with this stuff, see? Isn't that good? And it's be done unto you. That's how you get the job done. Get her done. Amen. Have a great one. God bless.